What's up my hunting brothers and sisters? Today we're going to take a look at some technology for your bow that I never knew that I needed. It's a new light for your sights. This is made by Elvish. It's the Elvish Tack Light. This right here is cool. We're going to check it out. Never knew you needed a device like this on your bow. So stay tuned. got back from the 2023 ATA show in Indianapolis and uh, I don't get a chance to hit the floor very much uh, and see a lot of the cool new products but a gentleman that I met last summer uh, at uh, the Mobile Hunter Expo great expo you should go check it out um, but I met him he's a fellow youtuber uh, he's been working with a company called uh, Elvish Tack uh, and he's buddies with the owner of the company known the guy for years the guy's an engineer and, and very innovative. And so my buddy came running over to me the first morning because he knew that once things get going, I get real busy. Uh, so he brought over a site with the Elvish tack light mounted to it. And he was all excited to show it to me. Uh, basically, it's a sight light. Um, and I was like, oh, okay. I mean, we all have used sight lights, or most of us have over the years. And typically a little cylinder and uh, use little like watch or watch batteries or um, hearing aid type batteries, those little things. And then uh, in recent years, there's some that have USB plugs on them. You can recharge them fairly simple. So I was like, okay, it's a sight light, but they started showing me this thing and it's really cool. So um, basically it's a, a motion activated sight light. And we're going to go over a little bit about that more when I open this up. So uh, a couple things about this is before we uh, get into it, I'm going to pull up their website right here. Uh, you can see these on Elvish, E-L-V-I-S-H, TAC, T-A-C dot com. It's their E-TAC light. Um, I see that they sell them on Amazon and eBay. I saw this, also saw that Lancaster Archery lists them, and there's some various other archery shops that I'm not uh, I don't know anything about that I find in a Google search that also lists these. Retails for $160. Um, so, full disclosure, I didn't pay for this. Uh, on the last day of ATA, I had about uh, five minutes during the teardown. They kept telling me, please come over, please come over. I finally had a chance to get over there. Met the owner, seemed like a really nice guy. And uh, he said, here, take one of these. He said, put it on your bow, have it, play with it, do a review on it. So there you go. Um, so I did not pay any money for this. However, they are not going to see this review video before I release it on YouTube. So I'm going to tell you what I like, don't like uh, about this product once we get it on the bow. So real quick, let's do a unboxing. We're going to take a look at the components. Then I'll go out to the shop. We'll mount the bow and then we'll start playing with it, shooting it. I got a couple hunts coming up this weekend. We'll use it on that. And I'll let you guys know after that what I feel about the site after using it. So um, with that, it comes in a very nice box. Uh, if those of you who have maybe followed some of my reviews, uh, I really am a sucker for nice packaging. I believe that a when a company is going to spend some money on packaging and present it, typically what's inside is a nice product. Um, you know, equate that to the old uh, iPhone packaging days. Everybody got as excited about the package as they did the, uh, the iPhone inside. But again, typically a quality package is associated with uh, a quality product. So a little window inside on the back of this thing, it gives uh, basically all of the, the specs and features of this thing. Um, Basically, it's a motion sensored control auto on off light. Uh, it's got various adapters for different uh, uh, sites as far as like the thread configurations. It's got different colors of, in the LEDs that you can buy. I believe this one is the blue option, as I recall, uh, but they have a purple and also a white option as well. Um, you got different mounting plate solutions. Um, and uh, I believe some USB uh, charging bricks and cables, which is something nobody ever includes anymore. So let's open this thing up real quick here. Cardboard box open. Comes in a very nice little plastic, oops, plastic tack type of box. 
gets in there pretty tight in the cardboard box. There we go. So close it up here. There you go. So it comes in this nice little plastic tackle box type of thing, which is kind of cool. Again, I'm a sucker for awesome packaging and it's got their brand right on the front, as you can see right there, Elvish Tack. So when we open this thing up, you're going to see the contents of the box here and I'll hold it up. I don't want to dump it here, but we can see it in the overhead view uh, what we have. So uh, basically we've got the unit right here. Okay, this is the little uh, control unit that has the acceler accelerometer in it that's basically going to tell it when to turn on and off. It also has multiple settings, as I understand. We got a couple different mounting bra bracket options. These are wire tied together. Uh, this can go on, you can mount this to your bow riser, you can mount it to dovetail sights, uh, you can mount it off of the screw sight brackets. There's a zillion ways you can mount this thing. Uh, another little bracket right here, uh, which you can use to mount it, uh, say off of uh, where your sight connects to your bow, and then going up to the control unit. I'll have to look at the instructions on all of that. We've got a couple different options in the light units. These are on a USB micro that plug into the bottom of this unit, like this. And if we turn this thing on, we can see we've got a little, little tiny blue light right there. And this one would be the same, but a larger light um, with different adapters. So we could unplug that, and then we could plug this one in, and there you go. You've got a nice blue light uh, on a cord right here. So you'd run this out and thread this into your sight light. And again, they got different adapters. I run an HHA uh, Kingpin sight, and I'm pretty sure this tiny one right here is the one that I need. So I'm gonna shut this off for just a second here. Uh, we got a USB to micro USB charging cable. That's pretty cool. It comes with a little Velcro strap. As I understand, if you can't make any of these other mounting options work, the Velcro is a, an addition that you could use. Don't really hope to use that because I think I can make mine work uh, with the brackets. Uh, you get a USB charging brick, both for your car and for your house. Something that uh, all cell phone manufacturers should include these days, but we all know they don't. So that is a nice touch that that's in there. Get a variety of bolts and nuts and screws and zip ties for your mounting options, depending on what your thread uh, size is, depending on how long of a screw mount you need, uh, you know, how you want to do it. They even give a little, little uh, socket on here. I'm not sure if that's probably like a five millimeter or somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, some different adapter tips uh, to go from, say, this larger light down to different thread sizes. Again, I'm pretty sure on my HHA that this brass one's the one I need, but I'll find out here in a little bit. And, uh, oh, this little plastic thing, as I understand it, if you have a site where you cannot mount a light to it, you can use this little plastic adapter to mount the, this smaller attachment, I believe, to the fiber optics themselves. So you can get your light that way. And then we have an instruction manual. So yeah, basically, uh, you know, that's the whole thing. Again, really nice packaging. So we'll break this down a little more when we get it on a bow. Uh, but basically, as I understand it, uh, in talking to them, watching some of their videos online, I did get this out and play with it just a little bit out of the package earlier. Uh, before I did this quote unquote unboxing, but you turn you can turn this unit on and then from there you can actually adjust with the up and down arrows here. You can adjust the intensity looking at this kind of upside down. Uh, you can look at you can adjust the intensity of the light so you can increase it up. So make it very bright or you can run it all the way down to make it very dim, okay? Then, as I understand, you can hold the power button down for, I believe, a three count, three or five count. And here you can change how long that the light stays on with no movement. So right now it's set for 30 seconds. So if we take this down to 10 seconds, which is the minimum, and we go, okay, 
uh, whoops, I turned it off by mistake. There we go, we're on. Okay, so now it's at 10 seconds. I'm gonna crank up the intensity so we can see it on camera here. Okay, so it's on, ten, it's on for 10 seconds, bright intensity. I'm gonna set it so you can see this and we're not gonna touch the table for 10 seconds. And you see it shut off. That's pretty cool. And so now it's on my bow. I've not touched my bow. And when I touch my bow, it immediately turns on. I just barely bumped the table. So that's pretty cool. A question I had with them was, well, let's say I've got it set for 10 seconds and I've got a deer coming in, but it takes longer than 10 seconds. They said, it'll just keep staying on because it senses your movements. You know, a deer's coming in, you're moving. Um, hopefully you got some buck fever, you're shaking, you're excited, but you're constantly moving. So it's sensing that and it's staying on. So it's not going to shut off until 10 seconds after you have quit moving. Again, I've sitting here, I haven't touched the table, so it shut off. Very slight tap on the table and boom, the light comes on. So that's pretty cool. I'm kind of excited to check this thing out. Uh, so next up, I'm going to go out to the shop. We're going to mount this up to my bow and, uh, then we're gonna hunt with it and I'll give you my real opinions when I'm done. So the Elvish tack light, who knew I needed such technology and a light for my bow? All right, so we're out here in my shop and I got my bow and my bow vise and I got all the pieces here. And I'm gonna show you this in a second and we're gonna figure out how to mount this on my bow. So, cause there's a bunch of different ways with all the accessories they give you. All right, so I've got all the parts and pieces laid out here on the table in front of me, and I was wrong about something. I said that this brass one was for the HHA. It's not. This is my old sight light uh, out of my HHA. It's just some rechargeable thing I bought off of Amazon. Um, it's a fine light, but it's really difficult to, to turn on and off. Like, you got to really push hard on this thing. But anyway, so I looked at the threads, and actually this adapter thread right here is for the HHA. So I'm gonna use the red light with that adapter thread, and then it goes into the HHA bracket on top, which good old HHA, you buy, you have to buy their light to get the bracket. So needless to say, I've got way too many lights right now, but that's fine. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is use this, I'm gonna use this cheese plate basically right here and this will mount to it. Um, I gotta get it all lined up. Uh, I'm doing this one-handed holding the camera. And I'm gonna use this little bar. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come around here on my site and there's a threaded hole that would be used, I believe for quivers, um, for like a quickie type quiver or something like that right there. I'm gonna mount that on there because I have the mountain view quiver and here's my bracket and so my arrows hang down right past this but i kind of got laying some things out and i think if i do this and lean it forward everything will be good so that's going to be my plan of attack here so i'll have to dig through those screws and find the right screws first i do have to do one very satisfying thing get to pull the plastic film off Ooh, that's such a satisfying sound every time Okay, so I was digging through all the screws and I found these two short little screws right here, which will go into the unit and hold the cheese plate on it, basically like this. And then I found one that's slightly longer that I believe I can put through the bracket on my bow, run up through here, and then there's a nut, a locking nut right here that actually will seat down into that little machined out area right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a drop of blue thread locker on these and we're going to mount the cheese plate oh and there you go that's mounted to the cheese plate pretty sweet all right so i found one screw in here that will work it was a fuzz long because my sight dead ends into the riser so i took my dremel tool and just trimmed off the end of it but it's no big deal i put a little bit of blue lock or uh, yeah, Loctite on there, and we are just going to screw it into this little hole right here. I believe that I can take and put this screw through here into the unit, and then take this little nut and go on the back side, 
thread that little nut on there. All right, so we're going to get this on here, and I'm not going to lock things down quite yet. I just kind of want to dry fit everything. Okay, so like I said earlier, um, I was wrong. You don't use the brass one, so I've got the right black adapter for the HHA sight. I'm going to screw this onto my red sight light. Uh, I could put some Loctite on there. I may, but for right now, I'm not going to. So that's on there. That becomes my adapter. And then you're going to want to thread this into your site because you're going to twist things. So you don't want to plug it in first. We're going to thread it into the site all the way. Again, I'm not using Loctite right now. I may eventually. So I kind of mapped this out already. I think what I'm going to end up doing is kind of letting this float since I can run this up and down and maybe zip tie this off to that top hole. And I think what would be best in looking at is go around the front of this light unit here and then come back around the underside and then plug this into the micro USB. If I have one complaint so far, it would be USB-C. Everything in the world is going to USB-C. USB-C would make this so much nicer. But micro USB is fine, uh, but that's a nice solid connection like that. And I'm going to take and put a zip tie on this out in here to hold this. And then that'll allow everything to ride up and down and I won't have this cable flopping around. So I'm going to get one of these zip ties that they included in this. And I'm just going to run it through this top hole on my HHA. Again, you can figure out what works best for you and your setup. But basically, I'm thinking I'm going to do something like that and then get me some scissors and trim that off. And there we got a really clean look on that. So that looks pretty sweet. And, and as you can see, I can now I can run that site up and down its full range and nothing's affected. So. That's awesome right there. So let's uh, turn this on. I did, when I went to tighten this, I did bring this down a little more, which pushed this forward. I actually ended up liking that a lot better. I got everything solid and locked down. So we turn it on. So when you're walking out to hunt, you're gonna have this thing off. You're gonna get to the tree. You're gonna turn it on. We are lit up right now. We're at 10 power. So it's gonna sit there and after 10 seconds, there you go. It's actually going to shut down. It's in sleep mode right now. So when we're hunting, then all we basically do is have to tap the bow and boom, it comes on. So, and I'm gonna give you a look at what the pin looks like here in just a second. All right, so I've shut off some of my lights out here. I just have my workbench light on. And so it's just sitting here right now, it's off. So you're gonna see, this is at the 10 power setting. I believe it goes to 15, but I'm gonna bump my bow. Look at that, it comes on. Look how nice that looks. You're gonna see it's going to shut off here in just a couple seconds because it's only set at 10 seconds. And boom, it turned off. And again, while you're holding that bow, your vibrations are gonna activate it. So I'm gonna bump it. Boom, I mean, I barely touched my bow and look at that, it came on. That's really cool. All right, so a couple rundown things on this thing. I rattled off a few of the specs earlier, but I was reading a breakout sheet that they gave me on this. So you basically got 15 levels of brightness with memory, so it's gonna remember where you left it. It's motion sensor controlled, uh, auto power saving option. Uh, so again, you, and you can set that, you know, uh, to how long you want it to stay on all the way from 10 seconds. I can't remember the maximum, but it's, it's quite a bit. Um, in this case, I've got the blue led, you got all these different mounting solutions. It's got a 600 milliamp, uh, ion battery in it, lithium ion battery in it. So basically two hours charge time. I did charge this up before I brought it out here. Battery life, approximately a thousand hours at level one and 30 hours at level 15, 15 being the brightest. Um, that's continuous on. So, you know, again, you're not going to, I'm not going to leave this on. I'm going to shut it off. And then when I go to the woods, when I get in the tree or in my blind or whatever, I'm going to turn it on at that point. So it really uh, should last all season. I don't see why it wouldn't. And if it doesn't, it's just a simple USB connection right here that you're going to plug it in. 
and recharge it like you do everything else these days. Uh, waterproof LED housing, CNC T machined aluminum shell, um, meaning this, alum this is waterproof. This unit here, as I understand it, is fairly waterproof. The only thing is you got the USB-C port in the bottom. So if you're in the rain and it's plugged in, you should have no issues whatsoever. But you wouldn't want to dunk this in water, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, it's, uh, like I say, CNC T6 aluminum machine. The machine work on these brackets is outstanding. Um, and then uh, two high quality fast chargers included. Again, we got the wall brick and we got the uh, 12 volt for your car, the cigarette style. Um, but yeah, this is kind of cool. I'm really looking forward to playing with it. Again, you can change not only the levels, but the time. I need to go through some of the settings and all that, but uh, still got a little bit of time to hunt left. So I'm going to get it out this weekend and use it. I'm going to go out, I think Friday night. So definitely want it at the end of the day, because that's the only time I'm seeing deer and uh, take it out probably, I think, Saturday morning, at least those two. Right now, those are looking really good. So pretty simple. It comes with a lot of stuff and a lot of hardware. I can't see how you can't make this work on your situation. I did have to cut this one screw down, and that's only because it bottomed out against my riser, and I didn't want to drive it into the riser. But that's no big deal. It's two minutes with a Dremel tool. All right. We'll see you in the woods on this thing. Pretty slick. The Elvish Tack Light. All right, so when it's all said and done, what do I think of the Elvish Tack Light? Well, I think it's a pretty cool piece of technology, one that I really never knew that I needed in my life um, because I've always had just an inexpensive little light, which arguably does light your pins up. But how many times have you uh, gone to the stand and you know your batteries are dead or whatever? Um, uh, and this one kind of solves that issue given the runtime and it's USB rechargeable and it only comes on when you want it to. Uh, when you touch the bow uh, and uh, you can shut it off obviously between your hunts and stuff so it's pretty cool you know I did hunt with it some the deer didn't cooperate it's late season it is what it is but uh, uh, you know in the blind and in a tree you know in the that first and last half hour I just cranked it down to like a one or two setting just enough to give you a nice glow on that pin if you were a tournament archer you'd want to crank the thing up shooting here in my garage uh with the lights dim, I was shooting it like at a 10 and it wasn't overpowering. It was really nice to shoot. So yeah, definitely I do recommend this uh, if you're a guy who likes the latest and greatest stuff. I mean, I don't see how you can go wrong with this product here. Uh, just the way it mounts and everything about it. So I'll put a link in the description to their website. So check them out again. It's the Elvish Tack Light. Uh, you know, Get you one for the upcoming seasons. I think it's going to be great this spring and turkey season when I sit in a ground blind, uh, for sure. So, as always, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. It really helps in the uh, YouTube algorithms, uh, and it means the world to me. Uh, thank you so much for your support. As always, God bless, stay safe, and it's a new day in the outdoors.